everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I installed a wall mounted microwave range hood combo and we're gonna be venting it through the roof on Modern Builds. The microwave that I'm using is both a range vent hood and a microwave in one. It's 1100 watts and it's from Hisense. Looks great. There's lights here on the bottom and the vents for the range hood right here. Typically, the mounting bracket that goes on your wall will be attached to the microwave for shipping. And after I removed mine, I then grabbed a stud finder to mark the locations of the 2x4 studs behind the drywall. All microwaves should come with a template to mark the locations of your hardware and the holes that you'll need to cut either for a wall mounted duct or a ceiling mounted one. I drilled four holes in total, two in a stud and two where we're going to use drywall anchors. These are the wood screws to go into the studs, and these are the toggle bolts that'll anchor into the drywall. And for these, I drilled a slightly larger hole. And where we're using toggle bolts, I'm gonna go ahead and thread them through our mounting bracket. That way we can get the folding ears through the hole that we just drilled. These toggle bolts are a simple concept and they work really, really well. I grabbed a level to make sure I was mounting everything straight. It's also good to make sure and reference the edges of the cabinets and make sure that distance is even on each side. That way the reveal all around is consistent as well. It's all right, I'll either get a wood screw into this one or this one. And I'll be sure to leave links to all of the tools, materials, and supplies down below. Fixed it. Your microwave should also come with a template for your top cabinet. This will help us lay out lines where we need to cut out for our vertical exhaust, as well as the filler blocks we need to create since the bottom of our cabinet is recessed. These holes are where mounting screws are gonna go through the cabinet and into the top of the microwave. So I'm gonna drill these out first. I used what's called a Forstner bit because they tend to give a really good clean cut, but you could also use spade bits here as well. In this shot, I'm cutting away part of the template that I want to trace out with a pencil. It's the section of the cabinet that I'm going to need to cut away so that the ducting can vent through the bottom of this cabinet. If I remember right, this was a 2 inch Forstner bit that I used to create this circle cutout where the power cord is going to feed through. Then I used both a jigsaw and an oscillating multi-tool to cut the remainder of this section away. All right, our cabinet is prepped, but first I need to make a quick alteration to our microwave. Most microwave vent hoods come shipped pre-configured to recirculate the air through a filter. But since we want to vent ours through the roof, we're going to have to reconfigure the blower motor so it's set up to vent that way. These steps should all be in your instruction manual too. And we'll rotate this 90 degrees, and we want to see these openings for the vents facing up. The instruction said to go ahead and put the mounting bracket back in place with the same screws. And this is our three and a half inch by 10 inch adapter that'll connect to our duct work. And I think this just slides in place with some security tabs. The bottom of my cabinets are recessed. And because of that, I need to make filler blocks to go in the corner. That way there's some wood for the mounting screw to sink into. If you've already got a flat bottom cabinet, this step isn't necessary, but I'm gonna go out and find some strips of wood that are the same thickness as my recess cut them to length, and then drill out a quarter inch hole in the same spots that we did earlier on the actual cabinet. I used the brad nail here to put it in place because it's not holding weight. There's gonna be big bolts going through the microwave. Now it's time to get the microwave in position. We're gonna take it, set the bottom in first, then pivot it up and lock it in. Okay. One, two, three. There we go. There we go. That looks awesome. And I love that the cabinet comes down just a tiny bit first. Yes. That looks great. <laughs> All right, now my dad's gonna hold the microwave in place while I get the mounting screws locked in from the inside of the cabinet. I had to drill this out a second time, so I'm gonna be using a washer. These two screws are holding a decent amount of weight. And I should mention, before you do this install, it would be a really good idea to double check that you've got plenty of screws going into studs on your actual cabinets. It works! And then this is how you actually turn the vent on. Whoa! That's a lot of air. All right, Dad, thank you again for the help. You're welcome. Now it's time to exhaust the microwave. As you can see, we've got a vent right here in the ceiling, but it is not ported through the roof. It exhausts any smoke, grease, whatever, just into the attic space. And that is not super pro. That means that this microwave vent hood combo is an even bigger improvement than I was initially planning. Cause I'm pretty sure that can't be up to code. And the best news is it looks like the center of our cabinet is also right in between our two ceiling joists. Before I drill this though, I'm gonna climb up into the attic and double check to make sure that I'm not gonna hit any framing or wires that I'm not expecting. 
I'm also hoping that the roof rafters aren't in the way. It'd be best if they're in line with our ceiling joists. That little bit of ducting right there is where our vent fan in the kitchen is at. All right, this is gonna work out great. Let me show you. As you can see, we've got a ceiling joist right here and right here on either side of this vent fan. This seems to match the joist locations that we found with our stud finder. And as you can see, the rafters aren't gonna interfere with any of our venting or ducting. As long as we're in between these two ceiling joists, we'll also be in between these two rafters. I'm just gonna make sure that I cheat left of this joist so I've got a little extra clearance around this rafter. I got rid of this little bit of flashing around the attic fan before we remove everything. You can see how it looks. We're eventually gonna get this fan out of here so these wires will get cleaned up, but we need to get back here and make sure that I'm not gonna hit anything else. And back here, I've got no wires I need to worry about. Right here is the top plate of our wall and we'll be installing our vent through here. To make sure that my left and right alignment is dead on, I'm just gonna drill a reference hole with a quarter inch bit so that I can see this back in the kitchen. I've been spending a lot of time in this attic lately. Let's get out of here. And now we're to the fun part, venting this through the roof. But first, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop. And the best part is you need zero website building experience. And now, with Fluid Engine, Squarespace's next generation website design platform, it's never been easier to unlock your unbreakable creativity with their enhanced drag and drop editing on both desktop and mobile. Plus, there are no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace store, whether that's a physical good, a digital good, or a service product. And if you're somebody that wants to take payments in person, Squarespace has got you covered. By connecting the Square card reader to the Squarespace app, all of your orders, sales, and inventory are up to date online and in person. So to learn more and build your own website before entering any of your credit card info, make sure and follow my link down in the description. That's squarespace.com slash modern builds. And then when it's time to make your new site live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain through Squarespace. Thanks again to Squarespace, now let's keep working. I picked up one of these seven inch roof exhaust kits that have basically everything you need. This is the boot or the adapter that's gonna connect to the top of our microwave. And this is our roof vent that will install underneath the roof and seal up. And then a bunch of ducting pieces. And these pieces just click and lock together, really simple. And I'm just gonna trace the outline of this ducting piece and I'll use a drywall handsaw to cut out the hole that we need for it to feed through. A lot of questions I see on forums and online is what size vent or ducting do I need? Now my direction said to use six inch ducting so I figured seven would work. And here's a chart that I found online based on the CFM of your unit and what size ducting you should use. My roof is not far from the hole we just made. In fact, I'm touching it right now. I'll use this long spade bit to give me a pilot hole that I'll be able to see from the roof. And to find the center of the hole, I'm gonna use this chalk line like a plumb bob. I lined the string up with the center point of the hole and then marked it on the roof. A spade bit with a long bit extension is what I used to get through the roof because of that space in the attic, but it worked. And we know that that pilot hole is the center of the cutout that we're gonna make for our vent. It was a pretty nice day outside and I was really happy to have sunshine in December. Let's get up on the roof. I can see the pilot hole right here through the shingles. This vent hood is gonna sit right over the center of that on the edge of this shingle perfectly. And the hole that we cut needs to fit this elbow piece, which is what connects our hood to the rest of the ducting. Y'all come up here with me. All of our measurements are coming from the center point, which is this pilot hole that we just got done drilling. Using that reference point, I'm gonna lay out a square the same size as the vent hood, not the larger flashing area, just the part sticking out. Then I use the pry bar to get underneath each shingle, making sure not to damage them. I use yellow tin snips to cut away the shingles one layer at a time on that line that we drew out. A sharp new razor blade on a utility knife is also key for this project. The vent flashing is gonna sit on top of this last layer of shingles, so I'm only cutting away the section that the hood is gonna be popping through. I used the ducting elbow to mark out the radius that I wanted to cut. I made mine using a jigsaw, but you could also use a reciprocating saw, a hole saw, or you could even plunge cut a square hole with a circular saw. If you wanted, you could add roofing sealant to the bottom of the flashing of your roof vent, but I'll be adding sealant after I attach nails around the edge of the flashing under each layer of shingles. 
My shot here isn't the most beautiful, but you can see how the nails go through the flashing and into the roof decking, and then the shingles are going to be able to cover up that nail, making it all watertight. Under each shingle that I disturbed and around the perimeter of the roof vent, I'm going to apply a liberal amount of this roofing cement to make sure everything lays flat, is watertight, and then over time there won't be any wind damage from any of the disturbed shingles. The ceiling is pretty messy, but I did my best, and make sure that you cover any exposed nail heads. And now check it out, that is a roof vent successfully installed. I'm hoping I'm not going to have to climb up into the attic to get this elbow connected. The roof is sitting at an angle, so I'm gonna turn this so that it can hopefully match. Our process for making sure that our center line was true all the way through worked out awesome, and we were able to fit this easily. It's in there, woo! That lined up perfect. It'll be a little tough to get duct tape around this, I bet. The last cabinet alteration I needed to make was a hole for the seven inch ducting to feed through the top of it. I forgot to click record with the jigsaw, but I did finish the cut with a multi-tool. Nice. I had never ducted any appliances before this, but I found out it was really easy. The adapter for the microwave just sits right on top. I don't have any way to get this one single piece into place. So my plan was to cut down a couple pieces of ducting, that way I could do it in steps. I needed one piece that was about the same height as the top of my cabinet, and then a second that would cover the distance between the elbow and that first piece we cut. I'm using those same 10 snips from earlier. Quick spoiler, this ended up working out for me, but I'm curious if you do ducting regularly, if there's something that I missed, like, should I have done this another way? If so, leave me a comment down below. All of my ducting is angling a little bit left so that it aligns with the microwave and the vent, but the metal does overlap 360, and I put a lot of duct tape on each of these seams so that there will never be an air leak and it won't shift on me at all. I couldn't do this with full pieces around the ducting because the wall was so close, but I got a good seal, I promise. All of this ducting is exposed though, and it doesn't look great. So to fix this, I'm making a cover using half inch drywall. I started by cutting it to the same height as the distance between the top of our cabinet and the ceiling. Then I had an idea to use my utility knife to cut away some of the material so that I could fold this drywall into a three-sided cover. The idea was basically making a folding miter joint, which I've done woodworking in the past. The objective was to remove the material so that I could fold that miter, but not cut through the paper on the face. That way I could avoid taping and mudding it. To reinforce these joints and to make sure everything stays square, I used these wooden blocks and a healthy amount of hot glue. So far, so good. In this shot, you see me cutting the drywall assembly in two pieces for the same reason that I needed to assemble the ducting in two pieces. The smaller piece is gonna get us to the same height as our face frame, that way the larger piece can slide in there. This ended up being a really snug fit for me, so I didn't add any screws, but I am gonna go ahead and spackle the seams and all of the corners. This is the color changing kind. After it dried white, I sanded it smooth, but I wanted the texture of this cover to match the walls, so I used this orange peel spray texture in a can. It worked out really good. I was able to get a pattern that matched pretty much what I had on the walls before I applied a couple of coats of the same white paint that I used on the rest of the house. And with that, this entire microwave install is complete. So let's check it out. So I'm really a fan of this stainless steel finish I'm gonna have on the appliances in the kitchen. It'll bring a lot more of a modern feel to what are somewhat traditional cabinets. It worked. The reveal between the microwave and the cabinets on all three sides look great, and the ducting is killer. Even though it has to sit at an angle a little bit, the cover is centered and square. Oh, and let's not forget about that nice contemporary roof vent. Looks really good. This renovation is gonna start moving really fast in the new year. In the kitchen, we've got countertops, appliances, and lights, and we're done. And the rest of the house is moving really quick now, too. As always, make sure to like and subscribe down below with that notification bell. And if you've got any helpful tips or steps that I missed, make sure and leave those down in the comments. That way, this could be a good learning resource for the next person watching this video. Happy New Year, everybody. And we'll see you next time on Mike's First Flip. Bye, everybody. It's, it's Mike's, Mike's First Flip. Flip. That's me. Bye.